The men's basketball team stays on the road and the women's team returns home. All this and more on the Penguin Rundown. Hello everyone, I'm John Ostopowitz here on the Penguin Rundown oh, and what a team. week it has been for sports. Um, both teams really trying to make a claim for themselves and when you see the men's team after losing to Navy going on the road and getting a win there and the women's team as well losing two games on the road and coming back home and really getting that well-deserved win. And, and let's talk about that women's team as after losing their last two road games, the women's basketball team snapped a three-game losing skid in front of the home fans at the Bigley Center last Saturday. YC sent the crowd home ecstatic after defeating St. Francis Brooklyn 70-41. to The Penguins struggled offensively in their previous two matchups as they were unable to shoot above 32% from the field. However, they shot more efficiently against the Terriers, shooting 42.1% from the floor and 46.4% from three-point range. The shooting struggles continued for Youngstown State to start the game. However, as they missed their first four shots and fell 7-0 early on to St. Francis Brooklyn, two made free throws from sophomore Tenalia Phelps sparked the Penguins' offense to start a run of its own of 10 points. The second and third quarters were all YSU as they outscored St. Francis Brooklyn 45 to 15 in the middle periods. In the second, the Penguins made their first six three-point attempts with junior Malia Magestro and sixth-year senior Megan Callahan each draining three to lead them to a 24-point second quarter. In the third, fifth-year senior Lily Ritz made her presence on the floor known, making three field goals. Senior Paige Shy denied the Terriers the ball with two steals and added four points offensively. YSU was great from beyond the three-point in the contest as 13 of its 28 shots were able to fall. Defensively, the Penguins held the Terriers to just 30.6% in shooting, along with forcing 17 turnovers. Magestro finished the game with a career high, 24 points, shooting 9 of 16 from the floor and 6 of 12 from behind the three-point arc. Callahan wasn't far behind with 16 points, driving 5 of 7 from the field. Magestro, Callahan, and head coach John Barnes said what it means to get this win before heading into Horizon League play. Uh, we definitely needed this as a team. You know, we've been struggling, obviously, from shooting, which normally isn't a thing for YSU. So I think we just kind of had to, you know, find our game, and we knew it would come eventually. So I think this is really good for our confidence going into conference play. It was definitely like light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like we had a good week, like Malia said, and that is such a big spark going into conference play, which we needed. It was definitely nice to see the lid come off of the basket a little bit for us. I mean, I, I think we were all, we've were all we all been a little bit frustrated with our shooting. I felt like we've got good looks, um, but they just haven't been going in. And today, you know, we started off making a few, and it was contagious, and a lot of players stepped up and made big shots. The women's basketball team will be back on the road for a two-game stint when it takes on Northern Kentucky at 7 p.m. on Friday and Wright State University at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Both games can be listened to on 570 WKBN. With more on the women's basketball team, we're going to send it over to Kyle Wills, who is live in the Beagley Center. Thanks, John. And like you said earlier, the women's basketball team had a tough stretch of road games in the last couple of weeks against Akron and Western Michigan. And, and one of the biggest things that this team struggled with was their offensive consistency as they were able to get out of the gates in both of those games with the lead after the first quarter, but we saw their offensive play take a hit in those middle periods as against both the Zips and the Broncos, they were unable to score 10 or more points in both the second and third quarters. And we saw those offensive struggles dip into the game this past Saturday against St. Francis Brooklyn. And that's kind of why they went down early seven to nothing. But by the end of that first quarter, we saw that offensive play pick up from the Penguins and they were consistent throughout the rest of the three quarters of that game. And that's one of the reasons why they came out with the victory. And with conference play coming up, that's one of the big keys for this team is that offensive consistency. And if they can play consistent all four quarters, it's going to help them come out on top in these conference matches as that's been one of the biggest issues early in the season for the women's basketball team. 
Thanks, Kyle. This past Saturday, the men's basketball team continued their travels, taking on Western Illinois and picking up the win for the first time in 21 years with a final of 88 to 64. Graduate student Malik Green aided in the Penguins shooting efforts by contributing in 21 of the team's 88 points, shooting just under 70%. Fellow graduate student Adrian Nelson picked up a double-double with 11 points and 11 rebounds, while senior Brandon Rush came off the bench strong, also adding 11 points. YSU's defensive efforts pulled away in the second half as YSU accumulated nine steals with five coming from Nelson. With this win, the men improved to 5-2 and two on the season for the first time since 2013 and the 2014 season. The men's basketball team will begin Horizon League play tomorrow, taking on Northern Kentucky at 7 p.m. This game can be watched on ESPN Plus and listened to on 570 WKBN. Earlier in the week, the crew caught up with Garrett Covington from the men's team to find out more on his career. I am here with super senior Garrett Covington of the men's basketball team. Garrett, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic today, Garrett. And like I said, you are a super senior. Yeah. Your, your sixth year here at Youngstown State. What made you want to come back here for your sixth season? Um, well, how last year ended, um, I feel like there was a bit of a story that hadn't been finished yet. and. I just feel because I've had so much history and put in so much time here, it's only right to come back and uh, win a Horizon League championship. Yeah, and then last year your season was cut short after three games with an Achilles injury. Now that you're back healthy this year, you got the couple games under your belt to start the season. How do you feel like your style has, your style of play has changed? If so, from your injury last year. Um, I think it's changed a lot. We have a lot more offensive threats, so it kind of like. It kind of makes my job even more simple. I feel like every other year, it was kind of like from year to year, freshman year, play defense, sophomore year, do a little bit of both, offense and defense, um, and kind of just increasing roles offensively every year. But this year, it's kind of changed because with so many threats on the floor, it's kind of like, uh, you know, like I don't have to necessarily be a person that has double figures every night. But my job is to kind of uh, bring the defense together. How many stops are we getting? Uh, how many deflections are we getting? Stuff like that. So um, it's kind of over the course of time, it's kind of like it's cool to see like how my role has, like how I've been able to adapt year to year. Um, but I love it. It's awesome. Now you're mentioning your style of play adapting gear. Now with your sixth season here, what has been some of the biggest improvements that you've seen from your team over the course of the season? I just think how well we can score the ball. Um, this team, I'd say more than any other team, has the ability to score the ball at a high rate. Um, we've got so many people on our team who just, I mean, a play breaks down and you can give them a ball and they can score the ball. So um, I just think I just think that's, that's the biggest thing I've seen in our program. Um, and I just say like, we're still, defense is a daily grind. We still have to, um, take pride in playing defense and getting stops, so we have the ability to score. So, now I'm assuming you've had a lot of memorable moments here at, at Youngstown State. What would you think would be your most memorable experience that you've gotten to be a part of here at YSU? I'd say uh, there's a lot. Um, we went to the Virgin Islands on our um, our basketball trip out the country. Uh, my junior year. Um, won all the games out there, and then we went to, we got to snorkel and go to different islands. We went to uh, the Virgin Islands, went to the British side, uh, looked at some nice water. Like, uh, so for me, that's probably one of the best memories I've had here. Now, my final question for you, Garrett: If there was a particular NBA player that you could compare <laughs> yourself to, who would that one NBA player? Everybody jokes a lot. Uh, with me because I play hard um, and I knock down threes, whatever, that Robert Covington is my player comparison. And it's funny because my family always jokes with me about how much I look like him. We got the same last name and I'm from a big family. So um, me, honestly, I don't, I don't really know. Anybody that plays hard, that just plays hard, um, I say would be my comparison. But right, most of the guys say Robert Covington. Thank you, Garrett. I appreciate the time greatly.
Thank you, Kyle. And what a career Garrett Covington has had here at YSU. And we look forward to seeing him more of throughout this season. Now let's send it over to Cameron Stubbs for your Player of the Week. Thanks, John. This week's Penguin Player of the Week comes from the women's basketball team as junior Malia Magestro scored a career-high 24 points against St. Francis uh, Brooklyn. Let's take a look at the highlights. Magestro scored her 24 points in 29 minutes, shooting 9 for 16 from the field and 6 for 12 from three-point range. She also grabbed seven rebounds and dished out three assists. As you look here, she knocked down all of her shots as she had the hot hand. She looks like a real splash sister out there. She looks like me in my backyard when nobody's around. Again, congratulations to Malia on her career day and congratulations to the women's team on the W. John, back to you. Thanks, Cameron. And, is, and that is all the time we have here at the Penguin Rundown. I've been John Ostapowitz. We only have one show left here at the Penguin Rundown. So don't forget to follow us on social media at Penguin Rundown 1 on Instagram and Twitter. And we'll see you next time, Penguin Nation.